I've already go through each setup and count all of the animals in the room, by this point I'm easily looking after a hundred or more. I've been doing this my entire life, and all this time later, I'm still constantly seeking to refine the process. That usually involves making and recreating setups to best provide for the animals, further optimizing my space, or simply doing something new. You've seen this play out for years as I've developed my hobby to what it has become today. Maintaining this may appear time consuming, but it's really not. The key to ensuring it doesn't become unmanageable is to expand slowly, streamline as I go, and stay on top of things. Allow me to put it this way, I spend about 15 minutes each day feeding, watering, and providing general care for everything. That's not all though, I spend anywhere from 1-2 to two hours every other week doing in-depth maintenance like water changes. So that's roughly 1 hour and 45 minutes on a regular week, and 2 hours and 45 minutes to 3 hours and 45 minutes on a maintenance week. That might sound like a lot, but apparently the average person spends more time scrolling on their phone per day. Plus, it's something I enjoy doing that brings value to my life. I'm very grateful for the new space for a number of reasons, but it's allowed me to greatly speed this up. Regardless, time is my most valuable asset because I can't get it back, and I know all of this can be done even more effectively than I do it now. Take my utility closet quarantine area, for example. It's far from optimized. You need look no further than the quarantine aquariums. I've been using mini USB air pumps to power the rack for years, but they're not cutting it anymore. They don't hold up well long term under daily usage, and are best suited for on the go use. I've had to replace most of them several times by now, and I only have a few remaining that still work. The solution has been on deck for months now, the linear piston air pump. With this single unit, not only can I power the quarantine area, but it's strong enough to do the entire animal room if I want. Plus, it's a very reliable option. However, installation is a little complex, which is why I haven't done it yet. I can't wait any longer though, and I really need this done. Simply put, I need to create a loop in the ceiling out of various pipes. I begin above the racks first with ABS pipe, which will make the belt out look clean. I cut them to various sizes, and attach them together with a coupling using OD Fusion cement. I took this up into the ceiling via 90 degree elbows, where I completed the loop with various PVC pipes and fittings. You'll see that it's all strapped to the joist, so it remains stable. I also capped off a derivative area where I can continue into the main room in the future. On the other side, I secured a barbed fitting that I attached to a vinyl tube, and then the pump itself. This is all located within the other closet, so the air pump can be completely hidden from view. I realize I didn't film much of that, but it's tough working and filming around the drop ceiling. To better illustrate what I did, I made a loop of pipes that's roughly the same size as the room. I used a T to split off of this and connect to the pump. The pump fills the pipe loop with air that can be directed to various tanks through these valves. That's where the ABS section above the rack comes in. I made it the entire length of the racks in case I ever want to put tanks on the left side as well. Anyway, I drilled holes along the pipe and screwed them in with the drill. I only need 6 at the moment, but I added 12 so I can move up to the next row. However, before I tie into the new line, I need to adjust everything. As I said, the mini air pump's gotta go. I'm also going to drop the shelf and need to move the tanks. When I made the no filter guppy setup a few weeks ago, you may remember me saying this. In addition to the ones in this tank, I have a few more that I'm running through quarantine right now to add diversity to the bloodline. Well, this is probably as good a time as ever to add the new guppies. I did a quick water change and set them free. I only added 4 additional males for now, but I'll likely get a few more in the future. I have to say though that this setup has been doing incredibly well, and I've enjoyed having it around. I'm really happy to have the guppies out of quarantine as well. While we're moving fish, we might as well circle back on the most recent DIY pond as well. Temperatures have been consistent enough that I feel confident about putting the goldfish back outside. I netted them up into a bucket that I floated in the pond to acclimate. After waiting about 10 minutes, I was able to set them free, which was an awesome sight to see. I'm sure you've noticed that there's way more in here than before. Last year I ended up with 100 goldfish that I collected from a pond somebody wanted to get rid of. Some of those fish have made their way into here, but I did leave some for myself as well. Trust me, I'm gonna need them once you see what I have in the works. 
Anyway, all of this is to say that I added a few more in here than I intended. I'll either take some of them back later on, or build the pond even bigger in the future. At their current size though, they can stay for a while. Additionally, you may have noticed that I made a few adjustments to the pond itself. I swapped out the pump from before to get better flow. I wasn't sure how much of a difference it would make, but it's pretty significant. It also cost 100 less than the original one, which brought the total cost down, making the build even more budget friendly. Anyway, back to the quarantine area. I pulled out the tanks and adjusted the shelving accordingly. Then I attached airline tubing to the valves, put another flow valve above each tank, added the sponge filters, and filled the tanks. You'll see here that I frosted the back of them as well. You may also recall that in the past, I had these tanks linked together with a single drain. That of course made water changes much faster, but it held me back. With a system like that, it's not modular at all, which makes it difficult to move things or do deep clean. I have it all as separate tanks now to do that more easily. That will be especially handy as I start to include bigger setups and saltwater tanks in this space. While I'm in this room, I might as well tie up some loose ends. One of which is with the plant propagation bins on the bottom. Obviously, I don't have anything in them right now, and that's partly because I broke the door on the big one during the move. Luckily, I have some extra glass from the IKEA paludarium, so I just cut it down to fit accordingly. I also want them to retain humidity better, which is why I added these weather strips. And I actually do have a few plants. These are just a few leftovers from other projects, but I gotta get some more here really soon because I'm working on several large vivariums that I'll hopefully be planting soon. I also want to account for getting salt on the floor. I do my best to keep things clean as I mix, but inevitably I get a little on the floor. This rubber mat will help make cleanup easier, and it looks good. Out in the main room are a few other things I really need to address. I still haven't completed the rack for the Suriname toads, and I'm tired of seeing the openings. I'm still unsure what I'm doing up top yet, so I'll leave that as is. However, I need to make a door above the tank and the doors for the sump compartment. I'll cut up the wood to get things moving, but I have to wait for the stain and poly to dry before I can finalize it for good. On the other side are a few tanks I have to dismantle. The Crystal Gems Aquarium was a concept I wanted to explore, and although I really like it, I want to refine it on a larger scale. I'll add the remaining black neon tetras to the community tank at some point, and replace this with something else. What exactly, I don't know, but I'm open to suggestions. The underwater riparian bubbles is another experimental concept I wanted to explore. Funny enough, the experimental aspect of it, which are the bubbles, are going strong, while the regular fish tank portion of it is what looks terrible. Even though that's the case, the fish are thriving, so no issues there. It got cyanobacteria early on, and it just didn't establish well as a result. You can't win them all, and honestly, I didn't intend to keep this one for long term anyway. Regardless, I'll replace it with something very soon that I really think you're going to enjoy. Lastly is the river tank, which I've been talking about dismantling for a while now, so that shouldn't come as a surprise. It's just an algae factory that I don't think is worth trying to salvage at this point. The fish don't care obviously, but it doesn't look good. Plus, I have a better idea for it that I think you and the fish are going to enjoy. More on that in the future. There is another thing I've been meaning to do in the studio area as well. Just after a few months of use, I can tell the tabletop I used was not a great option. It won't go to waste and I'll use it for something else, but I have a better solution. You've actually seen this before because I was using it as my computer desk while I fixed up the animal room and my office. I'm working on the terrarium desk once again, so I can actually repurpose this for the studio area. It's a little bit bigger and solid wood, I just need to swap it out with the other. This would work alone, but I want a darker top for filming. I intended to refinish and paint it, but I thought of a better option. Why not just cover it with a rubber mat? That way it can protect the table from my work, while also making it easier to clean up. I was going to replace it now, but I realized it's not long enough to go from side to side, and honestly, I don't like it. It's a little too reflective for what I had in mind, so I'll have to find a replacement. I'll take care of that and the rest of the studio area at a later time. There's another huge elephant in the room. No, not this one. The one I haven't shown you yet, where the goldfish are. That's because of all of this. I haven't been able to fully unpack everything yet, and the mess has just been growing because I'm so busy with everything else. And if there's one thing that I know that destroys productivity, it's mess and disorganization. If you recall, this is actually something I struggled with at the old house that really hindered my productivity. My garage workshop just won't suffice anymore, and it's very important for what I do. Pretty much the entire time that we've lived here, it looked a little something like this. 
Now it's no good because I build big furniture and things like that. And working around all of this is just, it's dangerous. I mean, there's no other way around it. We moved in and I was never able to get organized and it just kept getting worse. That will certainly be the case here as well if I don't take action. I really just can't deal with it any longer and it makes my skin crawl just to be in this room. I need to get organized. You may be asking yourself, how does this even happen? Well, it's something I've been asking myself for a while, and it goes something like this. As I said, I never fully moved in or got organized from the start. And to this day, about a half a year later, things remain in boxes without a home. However, there's something more significant that I do. It's no secret that I'm working all the time. And as I'm building things in the animal room, I'm using various tools and materials. Once I'm done with these things, I don't want them in the room anymore, so I put them in a box, which is then moved into this room, or in the case of the old house, the garage. Since even these things don't have a proper home, they remain in boxes until I need them. However, the whole thing has a compound effect. I add a box, things end up on the floor when I'm looking for something, and the cycle repeats until this happens. It's not like I haven't wanted to clean it either. I just never know where to start and decided to spend my time elsewhere. As I said though, I can't take it anymore and the mess is only wasting my time. And the thing is, none of this is trash. It's all things that I use and need on a regular basis. I've spent my free time for the past three days really trying to go through and organize everything. Although I still have a lot of work to do, I made progress which feels great. Most things have designated spots now, from bulkheads to hose clamps, filters, and much more. I mostly have my mock workbench put together as well, which accounts for all of my tools. I think one of the reasons I've held off on doing this for so long is because all of it is only temporary. I'll move it out into the garage at some point, but I should have at least made it functional long ago. I wish I would've. For someone who's always trying to improve my process, you'd think I would've done this sooner. It really was low hanging fruit. As some of you know, I've been sick for nearly a month straight and had a lot of time to think. I'm finally feeling better, which has me really motivated to get everything in order. I think I needed that though, because sometimes the hardest part is finding the motivation to get started.